my goodness, I can look terrible when I want to and when I don't want to. <clears throat> um, ignore the hair. Also, I've got one eye done, as you can see. Um, I was going to do my intro at the end, but then I thought, actually, I want to do this more. It's like, a, can we actually do this? So I'm going to do my intro now. Hi, welcome to my channel. <laughs> my voice. <coughs> to my channel or if you're new here my name is Melissa welcome join the family I know I look like Pippi Longstocking right now but my hair is annoying me anyway today I am gonna do try and do um a look that really kind of the foxy kind of look that's it's been hailed as the foxy look but to me it's like a cat eye but it's foxy these days I've actually in preparation taken about a centimeter off the end of each eyebrow because I want my eyebrows to be more up because my eyebrows typically go very down and I don't want that I want them definitely more up and I think if I look in the camera and just like I've rested my eyebrows like that's when I lift them they're rested I think you'll agree that this eye does look more pulled up whereas this one just looks like my normal eye and um, so yeah I just want to try and transform myself into that kind of dragged up sexy look you know when people always pose on instagram like that yeah that's what i'm gonna try and do and i'm only using like three eyeshadows really and then we'll focus a lot on the skin and having it glowy and gorgeous i just put moisturizer on and i not quite shiny let's jump into it i think well no i am i'm using my morphe james charles palette i actually watched his um, instant influencer last night and I actually really enjoyed it okay I really enjoyed it and I don't watch James Charles because I feel like there's just I don't know if it's because I'm very British and subdued and he's very American and loud and like excitable and I just feel like I don't gel with his personality but I really enjoyed him on that show last night I have to say so I'm using his palette I'm gonna start off with P. Louise base Mostly just because I get asked all the time to use it. Um, I always say I don't like it. I still don't, but I'm just using it because I've got it. And this is actually a P. Louise brush. I'm just going to start with patting this out. I'm making sure to take it out here because, as you can see, the look is dragged up. I think P. Louise base for me, I've got quite hooded eyes, quite creasy eyes. I mean, I'm um, almost 30 and you're, you know, your skin changes. And I just feel like P. Louise base is not made for everybody. So if you love it and you're annoyed that I don't, it's okay. We all have different preferences. I like to just go in my sponge on my eyelid anyway just to blend out better. I feel like with a brush I don't ever achieve a good blend with it. I'm going to keep my eyes shut and I'm actually going to set my eyelid. I'm just using this e.l.f. little under eye setting powder just because this crease is so bad on me and I just don't need that in my life so I'm just setting my eyelid. And I'll just take my sponge again. I'm just going to blend the edges just now. Just so that I don't have a harsh line when I go in with my foundation afterwards because I feel like sometimes I really struggle to blend out the edges and then it's like obvious underneath my foundation. This is going to be a long video isn't it because I'm just talking. Uh, cell tape is very important for me for a winged out look and I'm obviously going to try and get the angle the same. I'll do it there, I think that's okay. First shade I'm going to grab is this deep brown over here. This is definitely not going to match, I can already tell, but I think I've done it too low, so that's okay. And I'm just going to go all the way over to my inner corner. I'm just kind of tapping this on, not trying to blend it yet. I'll just use a liner brush when I get to my inner corner just because it's a small area and it's hard to get with a bigger brush. The next shade I'm going to go in with is this top one up here. This is going to blend out the shade but what I'm going to do, keep my eye open and take this in a triangle 
up to where my crease is. I don't want it above the crease. I just want it like up to the crease. When I blend it with a paler shade, it will go slightly more above the crease, but it'll be with a pale shade, so. I'll just use that smaller brush to get this more into the inner corner. And then the light shade that I'm gonna use is this one here. This palette's so big, I really want the mini one. And I'm just gonna go over what we've done. Trying not to take it higher. But just softening the edge. And this lighter shade can come through the crease more towards the inner corner. But if I open my eye, I'm not taking it above my crease. I just want a dusting of it. I don't want anything too much. Right, this brush doesn't have a name, it's this tiny little flat brush. It's just tin teeny tiny, it's great, but yeah, it doesn't have a name and it's not sold anymore. This shade here, the black, I'm gonna run that black as close to the lash line as possible and just use that wing liner brush as well, just to make sure I can get it right to the inner corner. I'll go back in with that first dark brown that we used. I'm just gonna Start blending. And instead of blending just like straight up the line, what I'm doing is blending it up in that kind of triangle shape towards my like outer crease. Just so it's kind of like more of a structured look and not just a wing. I don't know, I mean, I'm just winging this. Ho, ho, ho. This is a good brush for this look because it's nice and pointy and small. And thank you to everyone that recommended it to me when I loved, well, I still love, but I was talking about my M506. So yeah, I'm not just wanting it along the line. I kind of want it up there as well. And then I'll go in with that other shade, that top one here. Build this up around the edges of that deeper brown. And then that lighter shade that we used as well. Again, this one can come more towards the inner corner, but I'm using like almost zero pressure on my brush. I just want like a hint of it. Just that sensation. And I thought just to bring a little bit kind of more interest to the look, because it's a very, very simple look, even though it's taking me time, but I'm just taking my time. I'm gonna go in with this shimmer here. I'm gonna kind of cover this up, but I'll start off with this. This I'm just going to place on the front of my eyelid. Just kind of where we haven't put shadow deliberately. Not taking that above my crease. I just think it jazzes it up a pinch, but like it's not like oh, I'm gonna put glitter and shimmers on. And then what I did was I went in with Ofra Star Island, just on that same brush, over the top, just because I'm actually, I'm gonna use my Star Island on my skin and I thought it'd be quite nice to tie it into the eyes. Now, I think I need a tiny bit more black. Just built up here, just looking at my other eye. So I'll peel this tape off and see the damage. What you can probably see here is I've kind of skiffed the bottom of that. I didn't want it just connecting to my lower lash line because I feel like sometimes when I do winged eyeliner like that, that's when my eye gets dragged down and it looks a little sad. 
Um, and I just think on the whole this eye looks more pulled up, but it does help that I've got that line there, which we will do. Um, so what I'm going to do is take, now I think this is my blank canvas E27, no writing's rubbed off, a little bit more of my P. Louise base, and I am just going to like carve away that. Just to just try and like get my shapes matching. But more so to try and get my eye looking more lifted. Okay. I'll leave it there just now. Well, for the little line on the inner bit, I just use my KVD liner and just did a wee line. This is really difficult for me. The shape of my eyes doesn't really support this kind of style. I just try it. Um, and the reason I'm doing this now is because actually I can go back in with that blank canvas brush and a little bit more P. Louise base, which I've just squeezed a blow out on my desk, by the way. And then I can just kind of carve around that line to try and make it match the other side. That's not um, perfect, but it's fine for right now. So I've already moisturized. I want to go super, super glowy with my skin glowy and glossy and dewy. So I'll use my Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I'll rub it in my fingers just because it does do better for the product to be on. I mean, we all know that would be the case because the warmth from your fingers like warms products up. And a lot of the time I don't like blending stuff out with my fingers because I just don't like, like feeling all gooey. But it is better for the products that you're using. What is that? This is so glowy and lovely. Even just like on my fingers, you can see how beautiful it is. I put it on my forehead even though I've got my ring cleats. Whatever. Right, we will move on to foundation, but I need to wash my hands and wet my sponge. Give me a moment. I'm just using a bunch of favorites, by the way, and a few of them are expensive, but I'm not like doing that on purpose. It's just like I wanna use products that I, like this foundation, for example, super expensive, the ABH foundation, but I just, I do love it and I feel like it does give me a really lovely glow. And um, I'm using one shade 130N. I usually use 110C, but this does work and I just want a little bit extra color, but nothing like when I use that Jouer in porcelain. It's very much on me a medium coverage, a good medium coverage. I'm gonna try and avoid my lips just so I can put some lip balm on. <laughs> and it has a lovely sheen. Very dewy. Careful around the old eyes. Like I wanna do really glam makeup, but I don't just wanna like throw on my like heavy duty full coverage products just to kind of hide everything. I just wanna like kind of have natural-ish-ish looking skin. I don't want to use my Jouy today for example because that's just cake face which I adore um, but it's just not what I'm feeling today for my skin. I'm going to quickly cream contour with my Conceal and Hydrate. This is in the shade C14. I just find that it blends really nice and again when I want it to be really glam I find cream contour and it's just it. I just go around the perimeter, not too much. A little bit under the lip makes it stick out more. I don't touch my jaw with cream contour usually. Sometimes I do. It's usually a mistake. I'll just use this foundation brush just to kind of pat and swipe it in. The reason I'm patting is because, like, my foundation underneath is wet. And if I just start scrubbing it, it will just remove parts of my foundation. So 
So I just pat it out and then use less pressure around the edges. Just to blend it a bit better. But I don't mind my cream contour looking a little harsh because once I put my powder and stuff on, it gets covered up quite a lot. And I still have to conceal my face. So once I do that, I will cover this a wee bit as well. Yeah, you don't want to go in and just start scrubbing because it can really disrupt your foundation. And take it down my temple there. Just because I've got quite a big head, I mean I've got a big forehead, but it's also quite wide and it just narrows it a little bit. I use an old favourite concealer. This is my Jouy. It's very hydrating and it's quite pale as well. This is in what shade? Snow. Actually, probably should have used a darker one. But I'll just use this to bring a little bit of highlight to my face as well as a bit of coverage just because the ABH foundation is not super full, like I've said. And I like full coverage, but I don't want to cake myself in foundation. So I'll put it down here. I'll put some lip balm on. I'm sure you can tell. I've not used this concealer recently because, to be honest, the Too Faced one, is, um, I probably prefer it for... I think the formulas are super, super similar. The Too Faced, um, what's it called? Multi-use sculpting concealer. The formulas are really similar, both are really full coverage, both are really hydrating, both are just beautiful. But this Jouy, I think it's now like £18 on Beauty Bay and you get 3 mils of product. And the Too Faced is £25, so quite a bit more expensive, but you get 15 mils of product in it. So you're getting so much more for your money and I would rather spend £25 and have just heaps more product to play with than 18 pounds and have it run out fast and it does run out fast especially if you're like me and you you know use quite a lot of product i always kind of blend with the pointy end of my sponge and then when i want to like blend it out into the edges i'll flip the sponge over to the other side and that just softens the edges but because it's got no product on it it just uh, helps to blend it out I definitely highlighted under my eyes like more than I meant to. I should have used a like deeper shade of concealer, but to be honest, I think because I'm wanting that really glam look, I don't think it's going to be detrimental. Let's use a super cheap drugstore favourite setting powder. This is my Pure Bake in Lace by Makeup Obsession. The worst thing about it is it doesn't have a sieve. You have to actually like take the top off, which is so stupid. And then I like to use a different sponge to bake most of the time just because I don't like to put powder all over the one I'm using for foundation because I quite often go back in with my sponge at a later date. Later hour I should say. So this is just a little, I don't know, I think this is the tart sponge. And I am going to take this on the flat side of the sponge all the way up. Kind of encourage that lightness to sweep up. I'll use that on a big fluffy brush just on the rest of my face. Just dust this on, change my battery, dust this off and then we will continue. Again though with my powder brush I'm patting, I'm not swiping. I pat, 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 pat until things start to feel set. And I don't want to ruin everything. I am going to use my NYX powder contour kit. Just because I don't reach for it that much, but it is great. I like this shade here. I like to use a rounded brush because I feel like it gives me a more diffused line. Um, whereas if I sometimes use those like structured brushes, I get just a line that doesn't look great. So, so 
We're just doing little circular motions. I'm barely putting pressure on my skin because even though I've set it with powder, I don't want to disrupt anything. And just little circular motions and I'm going just above my cheek bone really. I don't really want to take it further than the corner of my eye. And it's more, you want to blend it up. I go around my forehead as well because it is not a forehead, it's a five head. I'm just into the hairline. I do go gently down to the temple as well. I've just got little baby hairs everywhere. Just that little bit with the cream contour underneath it, your chest gives you that sculpt. I don't contour my jaw because I don't have the jaw for jaw contour. I'll just put a tiny bit under here. Make my lips stick out a bit. And I'll actually take this shade up here which is just like a caramelly shade. And I'll use this to just nose contour a tiny bit. I don't feel like, I don't know. I don't think nose contour is always necessary. It's definitely not always necessary. But I do it. I quite like it, but just nice and gentle. I like to connect it up here and like drag it into my brow. I always think that's quite a nice look. Kind of gives you that structure down the center. I'm gonna use my Hula Light, and by the way, I've hit pan. <laughs> This is so great if you are fair like I am. Such a great shade. I'm gonna put it around the perimeter. This is an e.l.f. brush, it doesn't have a name. And then just kind of on top of my contour. Honestly, this bronzer is everything I could ever want. My eyelid area is annoyingly so light because of that P. Louise face, but what can I do at this point? No, we forgot, setting spray. I'll use my Shake and Glow by L'Oreal. I'm quite liberal with it. I love that setting spray. It's just like a high-end one, like the Glam Glow. It is fantastic. It's got a really nice mister on it. It's not too expensive, although you do get cheaper ones. I'm going to churn some butter. Mother, would you like me to milk the cows? I'll use the Ofra, like I said, Star Island. I mean, you can't see that, can you? So overexposed. Star Island. It is lovely. It's actually probably a bit much for today, but I'll just add a pinch. I'll go very gentle. We will, I will, I just get taken over by highlighter mania, probably. I just quite like how it just melts into the eye because it's what I used. Take it through the brow. I personally don't put it on the center of my forehead because I've got wrinkles there. But I do just tap in between the brows a little. I like a bit of shine there. I think it looks really like natural to have a sheen in that area of your face. Someone left me a comment saying, oh, you look so greasy, but I was like, I like it. <laughs> this is why I just love not having my brows on because I can just go through with my highlight and not worry about anything. A bit here, dip dab on the chin. And then I like to smile and put it on my cheekbones. Just a pinch. I just think then when you are talking and you are smiling, you know, I mean this is very fake, but you can see that shine and I really like it. Very glowy. I tried to go in a bit more naturally. Did I achieve it? Probably not. I want to use a glowy peachy blush. Um, I might as well use Milani Luminoso. Lovely blush. I actually wanted to put on Benefit Georgia 
but I feel like I've used quite a lot of expensive products so I'm using this just because it is cheaper but I have to say Benefit Georgia has been tickling my pickle, my peach right over there, a bit on the chin, a bit up here I'm really liking how the skin is looking um, I'll throw on my brows quickly and then we'll come back and we'll finish off eyes and put lashes on and then pick a lip. I mean to me this is still an experiment, will this work out and will I like it? I don't know, but we'll see. So I'll put my brows on and then we'll move on. I've just tried to like do my brows so that they're not slanting down so much on the outside and they're more, more straight but there's only so straight I can actually make my brows because they do have a you know, I'd have to cut them off there and that would be stupid. So underneath, I don't really want to do much. I think I'm just going to run this lighter shade here, just all along the bottom. But just very lightly, just for a little sheen of colour. A tiny bit of definition, but nothing super obvious. I think if I, if I load up my lower lash line and put depth on the outside it'll just negate the point of having like swept that up I think <laughs> I'm still experimenting but let's pick an eyelash hmm oh, there's too much choice I've used a favorite pair of lashes and the way I've stuck it on is to try and like elongate and lift up my eye but first of all I'll use my Rimmel nude eyeliner I don't feel like a dark colour would do any justice with this kind of look. Lash, by the way, is Pinky Goat in the style Nura. Um, I get mine at Superdrug, obviously not right now, but this is an old pair. And I paint my lash glue on. It's just so much easier, honestly. Wow. I really wish I'd started doing this sooner. Bit of a thicker line this outer part but then what I do is just put a tiny bit of lash glue in the very inner corner of the lash I'm going to apply because sometimes I feel like I don't get the glue in far enough and I'm going to put my lash on kind of like normal but when it comes to the outer corner instead of having it tucked right up my lash line I'm going to put it like just a couple of millimeters above where my lower lash, my top lash line is. Stick this down the rest of the way. And then you can quite obviously see my lashes here. But I've got a trick for that too. If you haven't started painting it on your lash line, the lash glue, you really need to. Like it's, it's a game changer. I'll put mascara on my actual lashes and then I take one of these lash applicator tools it's a lot better than tweezers for this and I'll grab the falsies and my lashes at this outer corner and just encourage them to stick together so that it doesn't look like I put the lash not close to my lash line at the outer corner can just pinch all the way along and you see it just lifts my eye oh I'm not stuck these lashes together because I'm kind of giving the illusion that my lashes start higher up on the outer corner I love these lashes by the way they are such favorites they're not natural in any way but we're not exactly going natural today, are we? On my lower lashes, I didn't want to put black mascara, so I actually just took my ABH Dip Brow Gel. This is in the shade Blonde. And I just put this on my lashes just to kind of give them a little bit of definition. A little bit more fullness. But I don't want to add colour, really. In fact, this is lightening them. But I think it really works for this look, anyway. Like, I think that really lifts up my eyes by applying my lashes on the outer corner a couple of millimetres higher than you technically should, but 
tuck them right in on the inner corner, right at the lashes. And then it just gives you that, I think. I think this is working. I'm gonna do a nude lip because I think it'll really suit this look. I think a red would as well, but I don't want to put red on. It's just not in the mood for it. I'll use my MUA TLC lip liner. I am gonna go for quite luscious lips today. Kind of almost doing that video technique that I followed, the snitchery one, where it's very rounded, just so they look more plump. I'll link that video on up there if you want to see it. Grab a deeper lip liner. This is Huda Flirt. First one I grabbed out of my drawer. This is our favourite Maybelline lipstick. This is, no, this is the wrong one. This is the right one, 981 or Purely Nude, you can see. This is a really pale one. I can't actually drag it over my lips because it's so empty. I'll just pat it out my finger. They look so much like plumper and bigger because it's so light on the inside. The middle, so it drags that forward and the depth drags it back. I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of concealer. I'm just gonna like clean up the lip line. And just like that video, the lip video, I'm gonna round it off. Yeah, that side looks bigger than that side. Such a good technique. Gloss. I think I'll just put clear gloss on. I've got this Lime Crime Wet Cherry one. But I'm not crazy, I'll put it on the back of my hand and then just pat it on. I hate getting the wand all disgusting if you've got lip product on already. I forgot how nice that Lime Crime one smells. Just a wee bit of sheen. And then last up, I want to add on a really glowy setting spray, something that actually will give my skin a bit more luminosity. So I think I'll use, I think I'll use my Iconic Blender one because I've been using it quite a few times recently. And I have really enjoyed it. This is the Prep Cyclo Mines in the shade Original. There's like a bronzier one and then this one. It does just add a glorious sheen. I'll let that sink in. If there's any blobs, I just go in with my sponge. Sometimes you get blobs. I feel like a different person right now with this makeup on and I'm kind of feeling it. I mean, I still feel, honestly, I still feel like I look a little plain, but at the same time, I'm like, I feel kind of like sexy. I will go do something with my hair and then that'll be us and put some jewelry on. Okay, I finished off my makeup, put my hoops in. Even got a necklace on, which is really weird for me. And it's actually a long necklace, but I don't like that, so I just pulled it up. Um, I'm finished. I'm finished. So, what do you think? What are your thoughts? What do I need to do differently? I must say, like, with my eyes, like, I feel like I've dragged up my eyes on the outer corner quite a lot. And it's made me feel a lot more comfortable just wearing this kind of, like to me this is a really kind of plain neutral eye. I mean it's pretty but it's, you know, for my kind of taste it's quite subdued. But I feel comfortable with it whereas usually with wing liner I don't. And I think it's just me, you know, raising up the outside edge and spending a bit more time trying. Um, I'm really happy with the skin. I mean all of my makeup I really like to be honest just because I did use a lot of favourite products. Like I said I know they're quite expensive but... If they're favourites, they're favourites, and sometimes I just, you know, use whatever, whatever's there. Yeah, I'm, I actually feel really good. Like, I feel like I could go out right now and be like, don't know what the finger guns are for. Yeah, 
let me know what you think tell me though if there's any tutorials i should watch any tips i should take on board to really try and do that extended up and out um i'm happy that's all that matters is it not really but for yeah whatever thank you so much for watching i do really hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave it a big thumbs up it really helps me out um leave me a comment down below and subscribe to my channel because why not i think i'm gonna jump on a live just now and uh yeah i hope i'll catch you on the flip side bye